This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. Right now at 6 on Good Morning Indiana. Nobody plans to kill anyone. At least that's what I like to think. Her life changed in an instant when a drunk driver slammed into her husband's vehicle, killing him and a Colts player while driving for Uber. Only on RTV6, her battle against Uber to get what she says she deserves. The rain has come to an end, but we're left with a cooler and breezy day across central Indiana. The battle against violence continues in Indianapolis this morning. The Indiana Law Marion County prosecutors say could be the answer. Neighbors in one central Indiana community are concerned with new technology popping up. This morning, they're pleased to state lawmakers to protect all Hoosiers. And white bicycles are popping up across central Indiana. What they represent and who's behind the effort. Six o'clock here on your Tuesday morning. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Meredith Barrett. I'm Rafael Sanchez. Our friend uh, Lauren Casey's on vacation, but we wish her she's having a good time. The weather's going to be perfect if you're out and about today in central Indiana. Yeah, you know, it's a little cooler, but it's the fall, right? You know, you expect to have a light jacket on, and that's what you're going to need if you're going to be out and about uh, throughout the day today. So that's what you should grab before you go. And I checked the sunglasses off here as well for you. I do think there's some sun at times, especially this morning. And then as the morning progresses, the clouds are going to start to fill back in, but you'll need them for the commute. Once the sun does come up, you do not need the umbrella or that real cold weather gear here throughout the day today. So here are the clear skies with the clouds gone and all the precipitation and the rain from yesterday off to our east. But here is the issue for the day today. You notice this big spin in the atmosphere. That's the area of low pressure that still has to track off towards the northeast. It's still close enough to fill the clouds back in as the day goes on, and it's still close enough to create some pretty gusty winds throughout the day today. So it's breezy from start to finish and that wind will prevent us from warming up much at all but we'll get you out the door first. 47 degrees at 8 a.m. By the time we get to 11 a.m. only go up a couple degrees to 51 as those clouds start to gather and of course that wind's going to make it feel even a little bit cooler. We'll talk about the rest of the day and beyond coming up for you in just a few minutes. All right, Todd, thank you. We are taking a live look right now at I-465 at I-74 on the east side. Just a few cars out there to get your Tuesday morning started. No issues to report right now. On this Tuesday and only on RTV6, the plea from the widow of an Uber driver killed by a drunk driver. She's demanding Uber's insurance company do the right thing in light of her husband's death. Here I am now, I mean, really struggling to basically exist. Um, and they don't really care. I think they think by me being in the position I'm in that I'll give in. I'm not going to. I mean, it's been almost two years. You know, this is ridiculous. Deborah Monroe lost the love of her life and is currently in a legal fight over an insurance payout. Monroe misses her husband dearly. She lost him and their home, and she would prefer to turn back time. This is Deborah Monroe's favorite picture. In death, her husband Jeff lives in her heart. His wedding ring, a reminder of their eternal love. This is my husband's ring and I always play with it when I'm nervous or upset because it calms me down. Deborah is frustrated with Uber. Her husband worked for the company. In February 2018, he and his passenger, Indianapolis Colts player Edwin Jackson, were killed at the hands of a drunk driver on Interstate 70. The loss of Jeff and the stress led to Deborah leaving her job. Luckily, her husband's life insurance policy payout helped for a year before Social Security benefits kicked in. She remembers well what an Uber employee told her during a vigil in 2018. The Uber representative told me they would do everything in their power to make sure that I was taken care of. What does that mean to you? That, that meant that they would pay the benefits under the policy. I don't want any more than the benefits under the policy. That, you know, and right, and, and that's not happened. Deborah says Uber has drivers pay into an insurance policy with a $1 million maximum payout. My husband was 54 years old, so he still had a good 10, 12 years to work. And he made a good income. 
when you take his income for those 10 years, not let alone anything else, just his income, that's over a million dollars. What hurts is that she is aware of the payment amount given to the family of the Colts player. They have settled with the Jackson family, and I feel like they valued his life more than my husband's life. I would say I was punched in the face. You were punched in the face. That's what it feels like. We'll keep following this story, and of course, the truck driver who was undocumented and killed Edwin Jackson and her husband was sentenced to more than 19 years behind bars. We did reach out to Uber on the story, and they responded with a brief email saying, thanks for reaching out to us. We will decline to comment on your story. In the meantime, and Deb's family has also started a GoFundMe page to help with expenses. More details on that in this story that you will find on the RTV6 app, as well as our website, theindychannel.com. Now at five after six, the effort to combat violence in the Circle City continues this morning. The Marion County prosecutor says one solution to gun violence is Indiana's red flag law. RTV6's Kelsey Anderson joins us live this morning. Kelsey, what exactly is the red flag law? Well, Meredith, to put it simply, the red flag law allows police officers to take the guns of someone who they think could injure themselves or others with or without a warrant. Now, the red flag law was brought up last night at the Community Justice Academy. And Marion County Prosecutor Ryan Muir says his office gets help from the red law, the red flag law, excuse me, after some changes were made to the law this summer. But he says more changes are needed because right now, if an officer takes away someone's gun, that person can go buy another one the next day online or at a gun show. There needs to be more follow-up where we as prosecutors have the ability to make sure that that person does not have the ability to purchase firearms uh, down the road. Some lawmakers who opposed changing the law say they don't want to infringe on people's rights. Mears is encouraging anyone who wants these loopholes to be fixed to reach out to your legislative representative. Coming up in the next half hour, hear from a teenager on her thoughts on how we can end gun violence in the Circle City. Reporting live downtown, Kelsey Anderson, RTV6. Kelsey, thank you. This morning, lawmakers are now being pulled into a battle over new technology in Carmel. The Carmel Common Council approving a resolution calling on state legislature to study the effects of 5G cell towers. rtv 6s Alyssa Donovan is following this story. Alyssa, what is the concern with this new technology? So some homeowners and advocates want more research done on this 5G technology to find out if there's any risk to health or human safety that could impact their families. Now, the towers are popping up in Indianapolis and suburbs like Carmel, including near bus stops, businesses and homes. Call 6 Investigates spoke with people who live in Carmel about their concerns for how close the towers are being installed to houses. They stated they're concerned about the effects of the radio frequency. A U.S. Health and Human Services study done in 2018 found that radio frequency radiation like that used in 2G and 3G cell towers led to cancer and tumors in male rats. This study brought to the attention of the Carmel City Council last month. Now, a resolution last night passed requests Indiana State Legislature take steps to thoroughly study the effects of 5G technology on humans and to immediately suspend the deployment and use of this technology in the state until evidence concludes it poses no harm. Now, the group CTIA, which represents the U.S. wireless uh, communications industry, says that current scientific evidence shows there's no health risk associated with 5G towers. Reporting live, Alyssa Donovan, RTV6. The time now is 6.09 and new this morning, Indy's airport riding high on recent awards for being number one in the country is also now home to several new businesses at the terminals. Today, there will be a grand opening of the FAO Shorts Toy Store on Civic Plaza. RTV6 has learned the airport will also mark the addition of nine other businesses in terminals A and B. The stores include a bookstore, several stores based on Indiana products, a candy shop, and one that sells travel gear. This is all part of the airport's three-year effort to upgrade services for travelers. We'll get more details later this morning during a news conference. The time now is 6.09. Election Day is just two weeks away as we cover Democracy 2019. On Monday night, the candidates for mayor of Indianapolis took to the debate stage. Democratic Mayor
Joe Hogsett is facing Republican challenger Jim Merritt. The debate at Arsenal Tech High School focused on issues impacting African Americans. The moderator asked both candidates, does Indianapolis have a gentrification problem? And if so, what will they do about it? The mantra of the Department of Metropolitan Development and the investments that we make, whether that be for, through federal dollars uh, or local dollars, is development, not displacement. Any development that includes city funding must include affordable housing. My program is that all development, all home housing development in Indianapolis uh, will have a 10% uh, affordable housing set aside. The African American Coalition of Indianapolis sponsored the debate. And here is your reminder, municipal elections are Tuesday, November 5th. A Fisher's contractor now faces new charges for allegedly stealing a homeowner's credit card and then racking up hundreds of dollars in charges. An arrest warrant has been issued for Christopher Salvo for theft. Court records show that Salvo took a homeowner's credit card while doing odd jobs and then later used that card to spend more than $250 at a Noblesville CVS. Hamilton County's Sheriff's deputies say surveillance video from the CVS appeared to be of Salvo. RTV6 has been unable to reach Salvo for comment. We told you back in September that he's facing home improvement fraud charges in a separate case. RTV6 is getting answers for those wanting to thank the person putting up these white bikes up across the state. You might notice them near memorials for people killed while cycling. They're called ghost bikes. One was placed just six days ago on the west side of Indianapolis on Plainfield Avenue. That's where 19 year old Andrew Talbot was hit by a car while riding his bike. He spent 10 days in the hospital and eventually died from his injuries. His loved ones have been wondering who is behind the bike placed near his memorial. They appreciate it as a reminder for drivers to share the road with cyclists. RTV6 did some digging and found Sheldon and Martha Hall. They volunteer for Indiana's Ghost Bike Project. We feel like that it's important for drivers to see that cyclists are being hit. Um, we're concerned about the, the safety of cyclists and so we're both retired and we've just done it as a project to help support safety of cycling. Sheldon and Martha say they placed about a dozen bikes across the state despite not knowing any of the victims. The bikes are donated by local shops and painted. You can learn more about the Ghost Bike Project and how to get involved at theindiechannel.com. It is never too early to learn how to succeed. Ahead in hiring Hoosiers, I'll introduce you to our program teaching Hoosiers the skills they need that will last far into the future. Todd. The rain is at Essential Indiana as you take to the roadways this morning. It could still be a little wet from the rainfall last night, but no additional precipitation. Temperatures will be hovering right around 50 degrees during your morning commute with some breezy conditions. The skies are clear right now, but that changes as the day goes on. We'll talk all about it in your Storm Team 6 forecast. You're watching Good Morning Indiana right here on RTV6. For the toughest jobs on planet Earth. Our DB66 Hiring Hoosiers initiative that only focuses on helping you find a new job, but looking into resources available to help Hoosiers succeed, which is also key for you and your family. And at the Center for Leadership Development, they believe it is never too early to learn those skills. I looked into the organization and learned more about the lives they're hoping to touch. We are here to develop the next generation of professional business and community leaders. Fourth graders to seniors in high school are learning skills necessary for college and career success. We know that a lot of our students, a lot of the students that we serve aren't getting the resources that they need, aren't getting the opportunities and the experience and the guidance and the exposure and all of that. So even our fourth graders in our Junior Self Discovery or Armani Book Club um, are exposed to character development educational excellence, leadership effectiveness, community service, and career achievement are, are principles for success. High school students are learning similar techniques in Paula Glover's self-discovery career exploration project. Last week we learned about working with people. At first I complained, I'm not gonna lie, but then I got used to the idea that you have to develop your own idea and we have to talk with each other. It goes beyond learning how to work alongside new teammates. They also learn things like dressing for success and how to be an effective interviewer. 
I can see how impactful it is for our students to be able to practice being assertive, to be exposed to the world of business, to create your own mock business plan even as a high schooler, and begin to figure out what kind of career path you want to follow. A career path and goals Blessing has already set her sights on and is feeling confident she can achieve. I want to see myself making six figures and I want to open up my own hospital. Like the Center for Leadership Development is located in Indianapolis, but welcomes students from all over central Indiana. It also boasts alumni that now work in law enforcement, education, medicine, religion, and more. And for more information on the Center for Leadership Development, you can head to HiringHoosiers.com. CLD, they do a wonderful job. They I don't want do. to brag on them. I've, I've done a couple of programs with them. We have a gold standard in helping young people do better. So awesome job on that I was very, very impressed yeah. when I went over there. Very cool. Will we be, will we be impressed with the forecast today, yeah, Todd, Todd Clawson? Uh, well, maybe somewhat. I don't think it's probably <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Ooh, he didn't wait. sound too certain TK, about that. TK, you're an awesome guy, so you could do better than that. Let's ask the question again. Will we, will we be impressed today with the forecast, Todd Clawson? Uh, Tomorrow. Okay. So tomorrow is your day. Tomorrow's the day you're going to be wowed and impressed. It's the best weather day of the week. Today is not a bad day. It's just not the warmest day, and we'll have to be contending uh, with a pretty good breeze. But it is dry, so that is the good news if you want to get out and about. But we're starting off clear here this morning, but the overall trend today will be for the clouds to move back in across the area. It's another breezy day. Yesterday we had those strong wind gusts out ahead of the cold front. Uh, we're on the back side of the cold front, but we still have this a big pressure gradient, and that's going to continue to cause the wind winds to be pretty gusty and then there will be more in the way of sunshine the further south you go across central Indiana throughout the day today. So mainly clear right now. The temperature is at 49 degrees. The winds are sustained at 13 miles per hour out of the south southwest. Those winds though as I'll show you will be kicking up into that 20 to 30 mile per hour range later on this afternoon. Temperature wise not the coldest morning for us. You may need a light jacket with temperatures that are in the 40s and 50s all across the area. So the skies have cleared. That is the good news uh, but with this pattern that's set up and I'll show you the big picture here you notice the rain is off to our east that's good news right that's not going to impact us the problem is we have this area of low pressure and we have this big comma shape classic of a very strong storm uh, this time of year we're on the back side of it so that's doing several things it's giving us these winds that are going to be pretty strong but it's also going to pinwheel some clouds back into the forecast throughout the day today so as the sun comes up initially we have some sunshine Sunshine, and I call it self-destructive sunshine in the sense that you think the sun is really, really good for you, and it is obviously, but as it starts to heat up, the clouds will fill back in because there's some cooler air coming in at the higher levels of the atmosphere. And here are those wind gusts throughout the day today. And you can see throughout the entire duration of our Tuesday, they're in that 25 to 30 mile per hour range. And then even into the overnight hours, it remains pretty breezy across the area. So get ready to contend with the wind for a good portion of time here over the next few days. Here's the clouds. The further north you are, more in the way of cloud cover. The further south we go throughout the afternoon hours, more in the way of sunshine. Your temperatures break down like this, and with those winds, we're not really going to warm much at all. 51 degrees by the time we get to 11 a.m., 53 degrees by 2 p.m., and then temperatures will level off only in the mid-50s. You factor in that window, and it is going to feel even a little bit cooler. Now, as we look ahead in our seven-day planning forecast, I mentioned tomorrow, most Mostly sunny, 63, really, really nice day. Still mild on the Thursday, but more in the way of cloud cover. Then the cooler air briefly comes back Friday and Saturday as that cooler air comes in. Pretty good chance of some showers on Friday, but Saturday at this point looks dry with a high temperature right around 60 degrees. And Todd, that was an impressive forecast. And Boone County, we see you this morning at 621. We are live with our in-dot camera there in Zionsville. This is I-65 at State Road 334. As you can see, traffic is moving really well this morning. Of course, if you are in that area, make sure to visit the village and have a good breakfast. They're on Main Street. It's always good food. Order up, except the latest restaurant trend does not involve brick and mortar stores. You see several restaurant owners, they're starting to whip up dishes that can only be served online and ordered online. The spike in delivery app use like Grubhub and Uber Eats is giving way to virtual restaurants. Owners are making certain that meals exclusive to online ordering to try and capitalize on the nearly $27 billion market. According to the U.S. News Product Development Group, that's the fastest growing source of restaurant sales the country 
has ever seen. Zombies on bicycles have taken over the beaches of Key West, Florida, and are trending six. The reason behind the surge of the cycling dead. Ah. <laughs> All right, we have about a little more than a week until Halloween, so some people like ourselves are scrambling to pick out scrambling. our Halloween costumes. The, yeah, we there don't have a, anything picked out yet. There is a staff party next week, so we'll see what yes. Todd Clausen wears. We'll have to check that out. But in the meantime, attention Friends fans, a hilarious new costume is now available for Halloween. It's a giant turkey mask, like the one you remember that Monica wore in season five to cheer up Chandler. It's now available on the gift website Firebox. This year marked the 25th anniversary of that hit sitcom. Good luck with that costume. Move over Walking Dead and make way for the Cycling Dead. 11,000 zombies taking over Key West Florida Sunday for the Fantasy Fest Zombie Bike Ride. The Bicycling Dead included traditional zombies, but also a wide variety of frightening figures, including skeletons, evil clowns, and undead brides. <laughs> it's a part of Key West's famous Fantasy Fest, which runs through Sunday. Looks like a lot of fun. But we're not sure if this is creepy or kind of cool. We're still creepy. trying to figure this one out. One company's <laughs> creating phone cases that look and react like human skin. There it is. Hmm. The cover can be pinched and even respond to tickling. It will display emojis that correspond to how you touch it. So far, it's only a project and has not been put up for sale just yet, but I would imagine it will be soon at a store near you. It is not Christmas in New York City with the Rock without the Rockefeller Center Christmas tree. And this year it will come from Orange County, New York. The tree will be wrapped with more than 50,000 multicolored energy efficient LED lights and crowned with a Swarovski star. It will light up December 4th and be on display until January 17th, 2020. And if you have never seen that in real person, I highly recommend it. It is incredible. I take it from also a fellow New Yorker. Yes. It's awesome. Yeah, so just check it out. So couch potatoes, beware. Nintendo has devised a way to get video gamers out of their chairs and working out. Why? I mean, you don't want to do that. But the company released a new game called hey Carl, Ring Fit Adventure. Instead of using update. buttons, uh, players perform real world exercises to move the characters in this game. Star Wars fans got their latest look at the last chapter of the Skywalker saga last night. The official and final trailer for Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker, debuted during the halftime of ESPN's Monday Night Football game. The movie is the ninth and final episode in the Skywalker story. The movie comes out December 20th. Ticket sales opened last night and are already setting records. So does that mean like Star Wars is like done? Like no more Star Wars movies? Are you kidding? Come, I'm Meredith. not kidding you. I'm not kidding you. I've Meredith. never seen a Star Wars movie. Well, you have 80,000 of them to watch. Of course, it's never going to end. You haven't seen any Star Wars movies? No. Where, oh, my. Where have you been? Uh, Doing other things with my life. <laughs> Watching Real Housewives. <laughs> you know. You know. I got it. I got hey, it. Hey, to each their own, though. That's right. I'm, at least I'm not taking up a seat, a seat in the theater for someone who really right. wants to be there. All right. Outside right now. Uh, not a bad day. Maybe go watch the movie. It's going to be kind of a cooler and breezy day. We start off with a little bit of sunshine here uh, this morning with temperatures that are going to be in the upper 40s, but your commute's going to be dry. The problem is the clouds just kind of hang around for most of the day in many locations. There will be a little more in the way of sunshine the further south you go throughout the day, so that's why your temperatures get close to 60 degrees. Cooler, though, to the north where the clouds are a little thicker. Highs today only rain around 54 degrees in Peru. The time now, 628. Stay with us here at Good Morning Indiana. We'll be back in just a few minutes. That's the benefit of Medicare from Anthem. This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. Graphic testimony on the first day of the hearing that could cost the state attorney general his job. Now at 634, women testify about what they say happened to them and how Curtis Hill's team is now responding. I'm Kelsey Anderson. Some elected officials think that Indiana's red flag law could be a big key in combating gun violence in the Circle City. And her life changed in an instant when a drunk driver slammed into her husband's vehicle, killing him while he was driving an Uber. Only on RTD6 on this Tuesday, the widow now seeking to change state law. 6.30 here on your Tuesday morning. Thanks for joining us on this October 22nd. I'm Meredith Barrick. I'm Rafael Sanchez and our friend Lauren Casey is on vacation. Hopefully we'll not take a vacation from any sunshine today. Hopefully <laughs> it's going to be nice out there. 
Yeah, you know, just today's one of those days that depends where you are in central Indiana. Okay. The further north you are, unfortunately, more in the way of cloud cover. The further south okay. you are, you get into more in the way of sunshine. But we all remain dry throughout the day today. And that is the good news. Storm Team 6 radar completely quiet here this morning. And that's the way it should stay throughout the entire day. There's only a very, very small chance in far northern locations that maybe later on this afternoon you get into a quick passing sprinkle. But the front has fully made its way through the area. The skies are clear. And we'll have a good amount of sunshine once the sun comes up just after 8 o'clock now. Uh, and then the sun will give way to cloud cover as the morning wears on. So big storm system, that's the front that went through. The rain's now off to the east, but still here's the area of low pressure. And you see this spin here, and that's just going to pinwheel some cloud cover in our direction throughout the day today. And it's also going to keep breezy conditions around throughout the entire day. We'll see wind gusts anywhere from about 20 to 30 miles per hour. So as you walk out the door, this morning by 8 a.m. against partly cloudy skies, then becoming mostly cloudy as the morning wears on. The one thing you will notice throughout the day today is the temperature. It really doesn't warm much at all, only up to 53 degrees by the noon hour. And then honestly, we don't warm much more from there, but we'll talk about the rest of the forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Todd, thank you. New overnight, no one was hurt, but a daycare on the city's northeast side will need some major repairs after a car crashed into the building. Police were called to footsteps in Paradise Child Care ministry at 30th and Gale around 1 this morning. Officers say an SUV drove off the road and into the building. The vehicle kept going and then rear-ended a minivan parked nearby. The driver of the SUV said someone forced his vehicle off the road, causing the crash. We are still working to learn whether or not that daycare will be open today. The time now is 6.33. Today is day two of the Indiana Supreme Court disciplinary commission hearing for Attorney General Curtis Hill. That hearing is set to determine if Hill faces any legal discipline over allegations that he touched four women inappropriately. The incident allegedly happened on the night of March the 15th of 2018 at a party in a bar after the legislature had adjourned. The Indiana Supreme Court will decide whether to impose a penalty which can range from a reprimand to removal of Hill's law license. Losing that license would disqualify Hill from serving as Attorney General. Monday's witnesses included Democratic State Senate lawmaker Mara Candelario Reardon from Munster. She testified that she exchanged pleasantries with Hill at the party at AJ's Lounge. She said he learned he leaned in as if he couldn't hear her and put his hand on her back, slid it down her back, then grabbed her buttocks. Reardon said that Hill appeared to be intoxicated. Defense attorney Jim Voiles asked Reardon to describe the dress she wore that night and also tried to bring out what she says were inconsistencies in her story. We have all the details about this case and Monday's testimonies right now on the RTV6 app or the IndyChannel.com. That hearing is set to last all this week. The effort to combat violence in Indy, especially downtown, continues. The new Marion County prosecutor says he believes one solution to gun violence could be something that's already on the books, Indiana's red flag law. Our Kelsey Anderson joins us live this morning. Kelsey, what exactly is the red flag law. Well, Meredith, to put it simply, the red flag law gives police officers the, uh, it allows them to be able to take uh, the gun from somebody who they think is a, will harm themselves or harm other people with or without a warrant. Now, the red, the Indiana's red flag law was brought up last night at the Community Justice Academy, where for the first time, the Youth Fellows Program joined the conversation. Marion County Prosecutor Ryan Mears says his office gets help from the red flag law after some changes were made to the law this summer. But Mears says more changes are needed because right now, if an officer takes away someone's gun, that person can go buy another one the very next day online or at a gun show. An Amina Dalal says the red flag law is helpful, but she thinks the change has to come from more than just legislation. I think the biggest thing is just that it's the little things that we do. It's living and being a loving person. It's being able to extend empathy and kindness and compassion to everyone in our everyday lives. Um, and that's what I really think at the end of the day, beyond the legislation, beyond all the programming, that's really going to make a change. Uh, those who oppose the red flag law say they don't want to infringe on people's rights. Now, Mears is encouraging anyone with it who wants these loopholes to be fixed to reach out to their legislative representatives. Reporting live downtown Indianapolis, Kelsey Anderson, RTV6. It is now 636 and only on RTV6. The widow of an Uber driver killed by a drunk driver 
is demanding tougher penalties. Deborah Monroe's husband, Jeff, was on the job driving Indianapolis Colts player Edwin Jackson when they were both killed on I-70 back in February of 2018. The man convicted of the death received in state court the maximum 16 years to the death of both men. Each eight years per each victim is the maximum. Monroe believes the maximum is not enough. You know, so it's not that we're not getting the max, it's just that the max is ridiculous. You know, Mr. Jackson did the right thing, he called an Uber, you know, and it cost him and my husband their lives because of a drunk driver. I think the penalty, if you kill someone, should be the same as if you had taken a gun and shot them. Because let's face it, that truck, that truck weighed 5,000 pounds going 60 miles per hour. That's a missile, that's a weapon. You know, it was the same as pulling a trigger on a gun. That's what I think should happen with people who kill people while they're drunk, that they should serve more time. Monroe has offered to work with the Marion County Prosecutor's Office on developing a plan to take to the legislature to push for stiffer penalties for drunk drivers. A criminal investigation is underway this morning after school administrators in Greenfield were overpaid by more than half a million dollars. A newly released audit shows three Greenfield Central Community School Corporation administrators were overpaid more than $651,000 in health insurance benefits. The district notified the State Board of Accounts after the superintendent became suspicious about an improper allocation of funds in August of last year. The three administrators were placed on administrative leave when the discrepancies were found. None of them currently work for the school district. The State Board of Accounts is asking them to repay the amount they were overpaid. The former administrators are also being asked to pay more than $33,000 in special investigation costs. You can read more about the case by going to the RTV6 app and clicking on this story. New this morning and only on RTV6, we're getting you details on a business that's now investing in the city of Beach Grove. Call 6 Investigate has learned that milestone contractors will bring new jobs and make an $11 million investment in that city during phase one. The deal is set for final approval on November the 6th. Now this project is good news for, for a city that in July also announced a big project in that being an Amazon warehouse. Amazon is opening a warehouse at Churchman Bypass and Arlington Avenue. The company says that facility will create dozens of full-time and part-time jobs. I'm Melissa Donovan. State legislature is now being pulled into a battle over 5G technology that started in Carmel. Coming up, what city council wants from lawmakers. Also ahead on Good Morning Indiana, a mom tells us students on her son's school bus were forced to sit on the floor while riding to school. Ahead, we take her concerns straight to school leaders. But first, let's check in with meteorologist Todd Clausen. Good morning, Todd. Raphael, good morning to you. Good morning, everybody. We're starting off with clear skies across the area, but one thing we all have have to contend with throughout the day today is another uh, breezy day across central Indiana. Wind speeds anywhere from 20 to 30 miles per hour from start to finish. We'll talk not only about the wind, but look ahead to additional rain chances heading our way. Coming up when Good Morning Indiana continues. The time now is 640. Stay with us. We'll be right back. So right now we have a developing situation as we take a live look at your morning drive. This is I-69 at 82nd Street. This is I-69 southbound. Of course, these are the traffic coming in from Noblesville, Fishers, Anderson, Muncie. As you can see, traffic is moving slowly. This is always a jam-packed area anyway. But that accident there in the center lane may slow things down this morning as you head out. So if you have an alternate route, you may want to consider it. They hope to have this cleaned up as soon as possible. But as you know, it's tight in this part of the city, so it may take a while. We'll keep an eye on this throughout Good Morning Indiana. We want to give you a heads up to a Monon Trail closure impacting how you get around the north side. A section of the trail near the Indianapolis Arts Center in Broad Ripple will close today with work lasting until Friday. You'll need to use pedestrian connections at East 67th Street and at Cornell Avenue to divert off of the trail. Crews with Indy Parks will be working on the flood control infrastructure protecting neighborhoods around the White River. 5D, 5G technology, we're told, is the future, mm -hmm. but some yeah. residents in Carmel are concerned about the health effects of the towers going up around the city. And so now the Carmel Common Council is supporting that concern, passing a resolution to bring state lawmakers into this battle. RTV6's D Alyssa Donovan is live this morning with the latest. Alyssa, fill us in on what they're talking about. 
So the resolution passed by Carmel Common Council last night is calling on state lawmakers to take action that will protect not only people in Carmel, but all Hoosiers across the state. The towers are popping up in Carmel and other suburbs around Indianapolis. Residents are concerned by how close these towers are to houses due to the radio frequency. On one of the black boxes near a small cell tower, we found a sticker that reads radio frequency fields beyond this point may exceed FCC limits for the general public. A U.S. Health and Human Services study done in 2018 found that radio frequency radiation like that used in 2G and 3G cell towers led to cancer and tumors in male rats. The group CTIA, which represents the U.S. wireless communications industry, says current scientific evidence shows there's no health risk associated with 5G towers. However, Carmel Common Council wants more assurance. The resolution they passed last night is requesting that state legislature stop deploying these uh, towers across the state and put that on a hold until they can find evidence that proves that this will not cause any harm to humans. Reporting live, Alyssa Donovan, RTV6. Alyssa, thank you. A Center Grove mother is turning to RTV6 because she says she's concerned school buses in her Johnson County district are so packed it's forcing her son to sit on the floor floor. This mom did not want to be identified, but says the number of students being packed onto her son's middle school bus is concerning. Her son is a seventh grader at Center Grove Middle School North. He is one of the first to get on and last to get off his bus. And on more than one occasion, his mom says he and other students have used the bus floor as their seat for the ride home. She says she called the transportation department, but did not feel like her concerns were being taken seriously. I looked on the transportation website the night before I called them and um, it said uh, three kids to a seat mm -hmm. and the aisleways are to be clear. Mm -hmm. Well, they're obviously not even abiding by their own website, you know, by putting children in the aisles on the floor. After a call from RTV6, a district spokesperson responded saying the director of transportation looked into the issue and randomly viewed video from the bus's onboard camera from October 8th and October 9th. She says the bus was full on both days, but not over capacity. She also says no one was sitting on the floor. Indiana law does not limit how many passengers can ride on a school bus, but does require everyone on board be able to sit in a seat. At 646, it might be hard to believe, but election day is exactly two weeks away. On Monday night, the candidates for mayor of Indianapolis took to the debate stage, as you can see. Democratic Mayor Joe Hogsett is facing Republican challenger Jim Merritt. The debate at Arsenal Tech High School focused on issues impacting the African-American community. The moderator asked both candidates, does Indianapolis have a gentrification problem? And if so, what will they do about it? Here's their answer. The mantra of the Department of Metropolitan Development and the investments that we make, whether that be for, through federal dollars uh, or local dollars, is development, not displacement. Any development that includes city funding must include affordable housing. My program is that all development, all home housing development in Indianapolis uh, will have a 10% uh, affordable housing set aside. The African American Coalition of Indianapolis sponsored that debate. And here's a reminder, municipal elections are Tuesday, November the 5th. This morning, people living in North Texas are left searching through rubble after severe storms moved through the area Sunday night. The National Weather Service reports an EF3 tornado touched down in Dallas. The storm caused widespread damage, destroying cars, homes, and businesses. The NWS also confirmed two other tornadoes, one in Rowlett and another in Wills Point. No deaths have been reported, but at least six people were taken to the hospital because of injuries from the storms. And we saw some remnants of that yesterday with all that rainfall that we had. Thankfully, though, that is all we saw. And Todd, we need to know what else to expect this week. You know, it's going to be pretty breezy here today. That's one thing we'll contend with not only today, but in the coming days as well. However, we do get the sunshine back a little bit today, but tomorrow, wait till you see the forecast for tomorrow. That's the day to look forward to. 49 degrees right now. That is the current temperature. Winds around 13 miles per hour this morning out of the south southwest. They'll kind of kick up as the day goes on, and we'll see those wind gusts anywhere from about 25 to maybe 30. 
30 miles per hour later on this afternoon. And as far as temperatures, yeah, it's a little cooler than yesterday, but not bad. We've seen a lot uh, cooler so far this fall season. When we've been in the 20s, it's 46 right now in Crawfordsville, 50 in Columbus, 48 in Greenfield, Richmond. You're currently at 47 degrees. So our featured dog today is Reese, all festive here for the fall season, ready to go. And Reese is sent in by Emma Kiley here. And as far as your pause forecast goes, green pause here from start to finish. We don't see much in the way of rain today, just a lot of cloud cover that'll be in place throughout the day today. At times, there'll be some sun mixing in, but you notice those temperatures only in the mid 50s for afternoon highs. So it's clear right now, and I think we all start with some sunshine once it comes up a little after 8 o'clock. The problem is that we have this area of low pressure that's to our north here, and it's just spinning the winds in our direction, and the fact that the front is still close enough to the area of low pressure, and that's when you get a big pressure gradient, and that's what helps create these gusty winds that will contend with throughout the day today. So the further north you are, more in the way of cloud cover. The further south you are, more in the way of sunshine throughout the day today. So we'll just kind of call it partly sunny, depending on where you are. Just note the clouds will be a little thicker to the north, and then the clouds do diminish this evening, and that's what's going to set us up for a very nice day tomorrow. In fact, tomorrow is the best weather day of the week. So tonight, clouds decrease. Once that happens, temperatures fall back down into the 40s. Tomorrow starts a little bit cooler with temperatures in the 30s to right around 41 degrees at 8 a.m. But throughout the day tomorrow, lots of sunshine, temperatures into the mid 60s. It is a little breezy still tomorrow, but it's still the best day that we have in our seven day planning forecast. As we look ahead, you'll notice Thursday, 61 degrees. There could be a spot shower in the forecast. A little better chance of some showers in the forecast on Friday with mostly cloudy skies and a temperature of 54 degrees. So it really does cool down heading into Friday. The weekend, Saturday, near 60 with sunshine, and then a few showers enter the forecast on Sunday with a high of 64. Todd, thank you. We need to take a look at our traffic now camera. This is a crash that happened on I-69 southbound near I-465. The center lane is currently blocked and causing delays. You can see emergency crews are out there helping to get that cleaned up. But as the morning commute continues to go on, that area is growing more and more congested. So if you can reroute, that would be a great idea as crews are working to get that cleaned up. If you're coming in from Knowlesville or Pendleton or Anderson or Muncie, you may be uh, getting to work late this morning. We'll keep an eye on that one. So do you ever wonder how toy sellers decide which toys will be the hottest, I mean the hottest ones this year? Is it based on tests with four-year-olds or maybe surveys of parents? Well, you might be surprised at who exactly is deciding what your kids and grandkids will be asking you for this holiday season. Consumer reporter John Matteries takes a closer look so you don't waste your money. Ever wonder how toy sellers decide which toys will be this year's hottest? Is it from testing with four-year-olds or surveys of moms? Well, you'd be amazed at the answer. According to Fortune Magazine, when it comes to Amazon's hottest toys, money talks. Forbes says companies pony up millions of dollars to be included in Amazon's annual holiday toy guide. This year's toys include a Lego Disney castle, VTech magical unicorn, and many more. But Fortune says Amazon sells spots in its annual toy guide for as much as $2 million each. The more sponsors pay, the more toys they get to nominate for the list. Parents then look at Amazon's toy guide for ideas on what to buy. Amazon's not alone. Bloomberg News says Walmart charges toy makers $10,000 per item to be on its buyer's pick toy list. So keep that in mind. The next list may be a paid ad, not an independent review. So you don't waste your money. I'm John Matteries. Good morning, Indiana. John, thank you so much. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Now, his listeners are wondering, where did he go? And now they're wondering what earned him a suspension. Coming up, what we know so far, but why he's off the air this week. That's story next on Good Morning Indiana. Days from 4.30 to 7. He's one of the most recognizable names in sports talk radio here in central Indiana. But this week, Dan Dockage is off the air. Shortly before his show was scheduled to go air on Monday on 1070 and 10, 107.5 The Fan, MS Communications announced that Dockage would be suspended from the show for five days. Well, former Pacers player Scott Pollard is filling in for Dockage all this week. MS has not said exactly what led to that suspension. Now, the company has only issued this statement. It says that Dockage and MS mutually agreed to a suspension period of five days due to a failure last year on Dan's part to adhere to journalistic principles valued by MS. So far, Dockage has not commented 
on the suspension. The former IU coach also works as a college basketball analyst for ESPN. All right, Raphael, now that you're here working mornings, <laughs> this means you have plenty of time for date night now. And if you're looking for something unique that uh, you would love to treat Mrs. S to, one restaurant chain is looking to help out. And they're doing it to honor, of course, a special anniversary. Bob Evans restaurants have started a contest in which they're giving away free date nights for an entire year. Now to enter, all you have to do is go to Bob Evans's website, upload a picture of yourself and your sweetie, and leave a 100 word story testimonial of your Bob Evans love story. The contest is in honor of the very first date that Bob Evans himself went on with his future wife, Jewel, decades ago. Now get this, this is the best part. During that day, Bob supposedly told Jewel, quote, I love you like biscuits and <laughs> gravy. Aww. That's romantic. Because if you had one of their biscuits, that's some good stuff right it there. It is good. Okay. It is good. Will, the, will the forecast be good stuff today? Uh, it's not a bad day for us. You know, it's a typical October day. We'll have temperatures that are going to be a little on the cooler side. It's a little breezy. We start off with some sunshine, then go mostly cloudy. Then the clouds will kind of thin again later on this evening with temperatures in the mid-50s. All right, Todd. I like you like you. eggs and bacon. Oh, everybody. thanks, bud. Well, we're back in 25 minutes and throughout Good Morning America with news, weather, and traffic updates. Have a good Tuesday.